you can do any of these things as stepping stones too. Like if you want to build a general store, if you want to do drop shipping, even though it's low quality e-commerce, I think it's safe to think about it like a stepping stone that can allow you to move to something else. Yeah, I mean, it depends if you want to build your own offer. Like, I mean, I think drop shipping is a step to building your own offer. And, you know, one of the best offer structures that are out there is uh, like a free plus shipping model. So we do a ton of free plus shipping offers for a variety of different clients. And that's right basically where there's no cost to the consumer. Uh, they pay shipping and handling for something. And then we Yeah, good. Thank you for having me. Well, it's always nice. Uh, I interviewed on my podcast, The Robust Marketer. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. And then we took a flight together. Uh, yeah, that was less fun. Had a few drinks. Yeah, that was a lot. We were on a three-hour delay on the plane when, yeah. the, when an air conditioning filter caught fire. Yeah, I could smell that. I was afraid we were going to take off, but at least they stopped. So. Yeah, that's definitely it should be against airline policy, I think. Yeah, I think so. Speaking of policy... Uh, as we near the end of 2017 and we reflect on the roller coaster, on all the updates that Facebook has rolled out throughout this year over the quarters, what, what would you say, the, the countdown, the biggest headaches of Facebook policy of 2017? Uh, I think um, uncertainty mm -hmm. is obviously a headache. Like, if you know where the line is or you know where you, the direction is, then it's easy. It's easier to plan around that and plan for that. Um, you know, we've seen a lot more stability in the second half of 2017 than we did in the first half because even the Facebook at that period of time didn't really have much understanding as to what was okay and what wasn't okay in the wake of a lot of the political stuff that was starting to emerge, I mean, which is intensified now. Um, but we would see campaigns that we were running that we were signed off on that would then transition to, no, you can't do that, that are now back to, yeah, that's fine. So it's, really, uh, yeah, it's a lot they, of. They've um, actually seesawed back. There's some flip flopping. So flip flop. That sounds you know, political. New, I say new information, new decisions. So yeah, that's um, facts on the ground. It's right? actually, I actually, I really appreciate that they're able to kind of look, go back and look at something and say, yeah, we made a mistake, and then you know now this is okay. And do you think it is that, or is it like the revenue team pushing them to be like, no, you got to make more money? There's always pressure from other side. We actually have seen. Um, you know, the, uh, the partner that we work with at Facebook definitely in the last two quarters was a lot more motivated to understand how much money we were planning on spending. So I think that, uh, you know, you got to hit those quarterly numbers, you got to get that pop on the stock. So yeah. that filters in there somewhere, but it's, you know, the, the, the line is definitely that it doesn't, but it definitely does. Gotcha. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your, your history here as a marketer. We call it the, the marketer's hero journey uh, on, on my podcast. But one of the things that we talk, talked about there was what you called the line in the sand that your company drew, where you really decided to go from, uh, a, say, a traditional, you know, a black hat affiliate background, oh. and then you decided there's a lot, there's a bigger future, there's a lot more potential in white hat. When did you make that decision? What were you doing before? Um, nah, let's just focus on what you did after. Yeah, well, I think it was just... A lot of frustration with the, you know, black hat stuff was it's a cat and mouse game. And if you're looking at it, you're playing against a company like Facebook worth hundreds of billions of dollars with unlimited resources. You're not going to win that game. Much the way where email um, senders back in the day didn't win the battle with the ISPs for spam. So, like, it's going the same way. We just saw it early and we weren't doing terrifically well with black hat at the time for some reason. Then we had this huge amount of overhead and... Uh, you know, infrastructure that was required to make that happen. We just said, fuck it. And we just drew a line in the sand and, and then pushed forward. Can you tell us what your big first white hat win was? Um, I think our, I want to say like a big white hat win, but yeah. like our first white hat win, we were working with uh, uh, Giddy Up. Um, familiar with uh, Giddy Up? Giddy Up group, yeah. Giddy Up group. Any, any Giddy Uppers out there? Any uh, Giddy Up? Oh, I see some white hats yeah. out there. Oh, they're there, right there, there yeah. White hats. Um, yeah, so we were working with them and we, wor we worked on their, uh, on their first e-com product and we saw some, you know, some, some reasonable success, enough to be like, hey, this can work. Let's yeah. push forward with that. And that really uh, enticed us to keep driving forward with it. So when you were talking earlier about the, the, the seesaw, where there's the policy overreach and then the, the clawback, like, you know, obviously cloaking and all those things, that's going to get caught algorithmically and all that. But even people I know that run some CPS stuff, 
I know that they've had issues. They've had accounts go down when, when they felt like they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. Uh, Have you guys experienced a lot of that? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> uh, you know, been there, saw that. So, I mean, just because something's not trial continuity doesn't mean that it's white hat or compliant. And it's less about what is being sold and more about how it's being sold. So, like, you can sell diet pills on Facebook. That's fine, as long as it's being sold the right way. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that has to do with, like, the, the structure and the voice and, you know, if you're using scarcity or fear or if you're causing the uh, user to have a negative emotional reaction, that's yeah. really the trigger, you know. If, that's the, the litmus test that we use. Is, it, is this going to make someone feel bad? If it's going to make them feel bad, the likelihood is that that's going to get banned at some point. That's interesting. That basically is my next question is like, what is the number one reason that things get, maybe that's a slightly different question. This yeah. is a personal sort of line that you guys have made, but what do you think is the number one reason for, for ads getting blocked and banned? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, complaints, you know, um, X out rates, um, low relevancy score, high bounce rate. I mean, if you have to think about it just in the terms of like, what are all the variables that Facebook has to consider about whether or not somebody's enjoying themselves or if they're having a bad time. And if you look at it from where Facebook's perspective is, if someone's having a bad time, then they're not going to come back. And Facebook measures their, you know, your lifetime value in your actual lifetime. Yeah. You know, like if they lose a user who's 30 years old, that, that loss is thousands of dollars for them over the course of their life. And they can see that data on a nearly real-time basis, I assume, because... The average, you know, millennial spends, what is it, like four hours a day or something yeah, on Facebook, it, right? So it's, it's, uh, there's really corresponding data to see if somebody has a negative purchase uh, experience on Facebook that they disengage with the platform. Um, because a lot of people, especially like older people in their 50s and 60s, when they purchase a product on Facebook, they think they're maybe buying it from Facebook. It's not abundantly clear that it's not Facebook. Facebook is like the truest native platform that exists. You know, you've got ads between like pictures of your neighbor's kids and your, yeah. you know, nephew and, you know, your yep. annoying aunt and all that kind of shit. Yep. Yeah. Your, your hockey team, we have our goalie just posts hockey team photos all the time and uh, yeah, you, you don't want to be in there in the, with the wrong thing. No. Um, and so like there's a real benefit to that. The reason that the platform converts highly is they've got great data and also people's walls are down. You know, yeah. you're you're cruising through your feed. It's a very personal, intimate experience. You know, you've crafted that feed for you. And if there's something in there that's jarring or that pisses you off, yeah. um, you might take action against that. So the, the question I have here is, uh, you, which one is this here? So, so it long. says, how much can affiliates get away with? But that's really not the right way to be thinking it's, about it. I mean, like, if you're trying to get away with stuff, you're not, that's like a pretty narrow, short-term thing. I mean, you, maybe you'll make 500 bucks that day or something, but like, don't you want to make a million bucks, you know, over the course of a little bit longer period of time? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, it's really easy. Like, so, you know, people say, well, can't you like tell us exactly what the policy is? How many, how many times can I say free? What's the, you know, maximum discount percentage? It's 50%. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what, you know, like things like that, um, you know, what, you know, give me guidelines. And, and really, I mean, they don't want to tell people that because if they tell people, then you're going to cozy right up to the line. And they want people operating much more within the spirit. And I feel like I've been brainwashed at like Facebook camp or something. Uh, but really, these are the things that we've applied in our business and we've had a ton of success with them. So and how has your relationship evolved with, with Facebook? Like, I assume you're pretty, like, at the amount that you guys are spending now, you guys are just spending unbelievable amounts with them. Yeah. Like, at what point did they really start to... Uh, you know, what's like really value that relationship? And as you've spent more, have they got more and more open about about their policies? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's like uh, I think James was talking about on the main stage a little a little while ago. You know, the, the more that you're spending, the more that they see that you're operating within the you know the the realm that they want people to be operating. The the more they're willing to give. You know, it's not just a you know it, it's a little kind of tete a tete kind of business. Do you have any, you know, go out on a limb, any predictions you see for the way, it, like, so take e-commerce, for example. Uh, one of the things I, I hear people talking about is the, um, the, the shipping times, you know, basically, you know, surveying users after the fact, did you get this product that you bought or something like, do you, do you see things like, like, do you see them coming in to make drop shipping harder to do in the next couple of years, for instance? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. They're I going mean, it's, to. Uh, they, they call it low quality e-com yeah. in, in, in t inside the organization. Like, it's a... You know, before the political stuff was on the radar, that was one of the primary things that they were running up against. 
And, uh, you know, look, there's guys like Mo who, you know, mitigates those kinds of challenges by offering excellent customer service. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, moving products to fulfillment from within North America. Um, but people who are not communicating with their buyers and they're letting them sit out there for six weeks, not only is, are their refunds and chargebacks going to be fucking crazy, yeah. but they're going to have complaints and it's going to cause them to negatively affect their ad accounts and their ads. That's not, yeah, that's not going to work. So uh, one of the things that does work, uh, it works in edgy marketing, I have to say, but it's creating a sense of urgency. And you know, you can only create a sense of urgency so many times with a consumer before they realize that I mean, there's really no urgency here. Yeah. What, how do you see that sort of tactic evolving on Facebook in yeah. 2018? Uh, so like false scarcity. False like, scarcity, like yeah. Like the countdown timer. Like diamonds. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. Anyone in the, yeah. anyone in the like, diamond business here? Sorry, like, but is it De you're a fraud. Is it De yeah, De Beers monopolizes diamonds. It's crazy. I know. Um, they just you just find them everywhere if you look. Yeah, they're <laughs> under the bed, everywhere. Um, yeah. Um, what was it so scarcity. Oh, Where scarcity, do you see right, yeah. false so, scarcity so happening in 2018? Ca countdown timers. So countdown timers are like equivocally ba like banned. Okay. Uh, like they don't like them, but you get away with them on Shopify and e-com sites because of the design of the site and the content of the product that you're selling is pretty innocuous. So it's more like, um, it's not like, so let me rephrase that. So countdown timer is like not good, but if you don't have a bunch of other heinous shit, then you can kind of get away with it. It's more of like a holistic approach to the page. Does it have a countdown timer and a pop-up? And like you know, a bunch of other spinning, crazy, flashy shit. Yeah. Um, you know, the more um, it's like it's almost like they added a point for every single thing. So you know, it's in this year. I think that you know, as their revenue needs to go, they will alter their policies to be more aggressive or less aggressive. Yeah. So uh, one, you know, the, obviously the biggest trend in, with this audience is sort of a, a move from uh, traditional affiliate marketing through to e-commerce. And what, so whether that is working with a CPS network like GiddyUp perhaps, or, or starting their own drop shipping company maybe where they want to pick a few products, build out a general store, what are some of your tips to, about how to think about the, the, the best way? Because I think you can do any of these things as stepping stones too. Like if you want to build a general store, if you want to do drop shipping, even though it's low quality e-commerce, I think it's safe to think about it like a stepping stone that can allow you to move to something else. Yeah, I mean, it depends if you want to build your own offer. Like, I mean, I think drop shipping is a step to building your own offer. And, you know, one of the best offer structures that are out there is uh, like a free plus shipping model. So we do a ton of free plus shipping offers for a variety of different clients. And that's right basically where there's no cost to the consumer. Uh, they pay shipping and handling for something and then you upsell the bejesus out of them. And uh, yeah, Facebook's cool with that. Um, so I think that like if people can start migrating to understanding like uh, if you can manage a drop shipping store, you can manage some of these other kinds of business models. You just kind of have to look out and see what's working well. Interesting. So, uh, do you guys use a lot of uh, things like ManyChat or messenger marketing? Um, we do a little bit of messenger marketing, although I would, would let, uh, admit that we're not as proficient at it as I would like us to be. And I imagine that's a bit of a, the wild west right now in terms of what they'll allow, and I'm sure that's that's an area too that's going to be tightening up in the yeah, coming. Yeah, there's a bunch of crazy shit with that. Like. They have this one feature where if you pay like $99, you can upload a list of phone numbers and then it like creates a messenger list out of them. And like, I don't know why you couldn't just go and acquire lists of phone numbers. And yeah. The so there's all kinds of like little. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so like there's all kinds of little like holes and, and weird things. But I mean, I think that where that will probably go is the same way that pages went, right? Yeah. So pages were free. You know, lots of organic delivery, lots of good business model. If you had a page, you could just grow that page and then you could build a business off of that. And then all of a sudden the organic reach goes down and you've got to pay more to reach those people. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they do the same thing with Messenger. Give, make you pay to actually have make, access make to Make you pay people. to access those That's going to happen for sure. Yeah, it's just, no one seems to notice that. But right now it's like, uh, you know, the getting's really good. Yeah. So one of the things uh, that, that, that's sort of happened this year is the, the attack on ad spying tools. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you have anything to say about that, because, then I've, because what I've heard is that instead of having everyone hitting their API and trying to pull out what everyone's doing, Facebook itself is moving towards a much bigger model for transparency, where they're going to expose what people are actually running. Yeah, they've already done it. You can use it right now. You just is that go, right? How you, do you do that? You just go to the page, the page URL, like facebook.com slash istacktraining and then slash You can see all my ads. ads? Yeah, and then you can see all your ads. You guys can see all my ads anytime, I promise. Yeah, you can see the ads for any page. 
And uh, yeah, it's, they're right there. I mean, it doesn't show you any metrics like the spy tools, like big, big ads or any of these other kinds of ones out there, but um, yeah, it's already in effect. So at what scale does Facebook care about you enough to give you a rep these days, do you think? I guess you guys are up in the stratosphere. Do you know where, what the lower end of that looks like? You know, I don't know specifically, but I think that if you're, you know, you maybe maybe 50 grand a month or something, 100 yeah. grand a month. I mean, you know, I, there's different levels. There's like SMB and then there's the uh, the GSO level. Yeah, um, in terms of reps. In, ter in terms of reps, in terms of groups. And so the, the lower um, level reps work with, I think it's like 130 different clients. Yeah. And then like our rep works with like five other or six other people. Interesting. Um, so there's two like pretty huge tiers there. I'm not sure what the level is to get to that tier, but maybe $100,000 seems to be something that's, from, you know, hundred grand a month seems to be jogging my memory for some reason. Okay. Um, interesting. So, you know, we're, uh, we're doing a couple things on this, uh, on this trip to Bangkok here. We're going to be doing Facebook Mastery Live tomorrow. Yes. Uh, which is sold out, but the live stream is still available. You may have heard me say this before. What, uh, what are you going to be talking about at Facebook Mastery Live? I'm going to be talking about uh, measurement-ish type related topics. So like, um, you know, when you're driving uh, traffic for a CPA network and you're getting credited something from the CPA network, how many conversions actually exist? Where is that leaking? I've got a really interesting case study where we were selling a uh, kitchen uh, appliance. Okay. It's like $300. We're like, oh, maybe, I know what that is. Yeah, I think. You, I, well, like, maybe this will work. Yeah. I don't know. And we're like, this did not work at all. But when we talked to the client, they were like, holy shit, this is working really well. But because of the attribution model and everything, we couldn't see that it was working. Ah. So, and then as um, you know, Facebook's released a new tool called the uh, Advanced Measurement Technology, where you can actually pipe in your, all your programmatic data, your tabula data, your Google data, and you can start modeling it within Facebook to understand how the Facebook touches are affecting conversions on other platforms. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's pretty fancy. So, having a good relationship with your Facebook rep is 100% valuable, but what percentage of their advice is, uh, is actionable? Because uh, I've heard a lot of people say, even at high levels, you, you, you know, they're, they're telling you things, and, and people will go out and even like, do the things that their Facebook reps will say, sometimes to humor. Sometimes they humor them and they I, don't, you know. You know, I, I don't think they're misleading in any way. No. I think it's just like. It's a big company. You, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times we have to direct, you know, our guy to be like, hey, can you go and look into this? And then he'll be like, oh, I had no idea. It's a big company, lots of moving parts. But, you know, if you, ha if you can um, help direct them and work with them, they're more than happy to do that. Okay. So. What are some of the key, re like, you know, when ads accounts are flagged for misleading user experience, what else goes into the decisions? Are they, are they looking at things that are off their site? Are they going to start looking at things that are, like, on your page? And how do they go about doing that? Yeah. Your pixel, I, mean, I guess, they, right? They, they cache every page that an ad goes to. And um, they have, they're hiring 3,000 new human reviewers. To, they want to try and move to a place where they can physically, humanly review every ad. Wow. Um, I don't know what the likelihood of that is, but, um, you know, and this is just a, maybe a good tip in general. Um, when these people are reviewing ads, it's not like this part isn't great or this part. It's like good, bad, good, bad. Pass, fail. Pass, fail, pass, fail. Yeah. So they're kind of using that to train the algorithm to make the algorithm more effective, right? Um, so if your ads look like ads that other people are doing kind of, you know, heinous shit with, the likelihood of you failing, even if you're selling a pretty good product, is pretty high. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So it's like design plays into things in such a crazy way. Because um, they want the newsfeed to look good. Well, not just the newsfeed, but like pages too. Like if you've got a really shitty looking affiliate, you know, if everything looks like a Garcinia page, I mean, the reviewer is not spending enough time to look at that it doesn't say Garcinia. They're just like, Garcinia, you know, it's yeah. toast. Yeah, Garcinia-ish. Garcinia-ish, yeah. I mean, design is uh, incredibly important. Do you think Facebook is any more lenient on, like, when they're trying to push a new format, for instance? So something like Canvas, which is something we're using quite a bit. Do you think that there's, they're more willing to allow you to push boundaries when, when it's sort of like a bargain where you're using something that they're really keen on? So they can do two things. One, they artificially lower the cost of new ad units to try and entice big agencies and big advertisers to use them. 
and you can take advantage of that too. Like Facebook Live was a really great deal for a long time. I don't, I'm not sure if it still is or not. Yeah, video still is, pre, is a pretty good deal, but yeah. it's changing. It's, I mean, it's getting more expensive all I the mean, time. In my keynote in uh, about an hour, I'm going to talk about how like we basically leveraged that video discount to really pop our company off. Really? Yeah, it was. That like, was one of the main factors in the. One of the, like we got to video really early. Yeah. And then we just destroyed it. You know. So. That's yeah. Like and, and I, I can say this because because we talked about it in our podcast, but that was what the podcast was called was seventy million in three years. Like that's just been an insane ride for your company. I can't imagine how big yeah, is it. How many I people? Think, uh, it's about thirty some. We scaled back it's not a little huge. bit. No, it's um, and we did like. Um, like the kind of progression there is like we did like two million the first year, four million the second year, and then almost seventy million the third year, and that was like leveraging and experimenting with new um, ad units like video. And now at that scale, you're able to attract a whole other echelon of clients, I imagine. Yeah, and people want to. We got a you know a laundry list like our our funnel is our pipeline's fuller than we can handle really. Amazing. Um, yeah, it's great. Any uh, final words on Facebook policy for the audience that they that want to leave people with? Um, Pre-sales in health and finance are banned now. They're but banned. Banned in health and finance. Oh yeah, we were going to talk specifically about some health and finance. Yeah, yeah just health and finance. So, other than health and finance, you know, pre-sale content away. I mean, we use pre-sale content all the time. I'm blanking all of a sudden. Explain pre-sale content. Yeah, like, it's just you know, if you've got an ad that goes from an ad to a content site that has okay. like a really fluffy review of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a vlog or a. Yeah. You know, okay. It's a, an article. Okay, it's an article. Yeah. It's hard. It's fake news. It's no. it's, <laughs> it's a very generous article. Yeah. I bet I shouldn't have said fake news on on this. <laughs> they don't they don't like that, do they? No. No. They don't. They don't. It's, well, let's maybe scary. end it right there before I go any further. Let's pull the pin. Pull the pin on this mother. So if you want to catch Jason, you're going to catch him on the live stream or at the Facebook Elite Retreat, which is super high level marketing happening in Phuket. On the 10th to the 12th, day passes available for both days, still available. So come see us at the booth for those. Give Jason a big round of applause. I like how it filled up in here. Oh, I'm at the uh, Elite Retreat, I'm going to be doing a uh, teardown for a hair loss product ah. that we made compliant. And all the steps and process. Does it work? Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. You only have people see me with a hat on, but I yeah, actually could use I'll, that I'll product. I'll send you some. It's cool. Okay. Yeah. Good. I like your hat. Can I have a hat? Yeah, you're going to get a hat for sure. Awesome. You get a hat, you get a shirt, and you get socks. Anyone else here get socks? Those are some pretty good socks, right? Oh, that guy from Victoria likes Man, them. Anyway, socks. thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you on the main stage soon.